As a physicist, I sometimes get approached by people asking if I believe in a God. And also as a physicist, I try to avoid having beliefs that are not backed up by scientific evidence and theory. And so I tell them, there are no gods. And here is my typical, or my favorite, ontological proof. I'll step through the proof first and then go back through and discuss it in a little more detail. A. Beings that cannot violate natural physical laws are not gods. For example, humans. Conversely, B. Hypothetical gods must be able to violate natural physical laws. C. Violating natural physical laws requires altering physical constants. D. The quantum field exists. E. The physical constants are emergent properties of the quantum field. F. The physical constants form a unique set. G. Hypothetical gods cannot change the physical constants. H. There are no gods. So the first part, normal beings like humans can't violate the natural laws of physics. And when I say natural laws of physics, I'm not saying man-made laws. I'm saying the real natural laws, whatever they are because humans are discovering those as we go and some of the current physics may, may not or certainly is not a natural law because it leaves gaps or errors even. Uh, in particle theory, for example, there's decays that violate the theory which tells us that the theory is wrong. If nature violates your theory, your theory is wrong. Same thing with dark matter. If your gravitational theory is violated by nature, your theory is wrong and you need to fix it. It doesn't mean that gravity is still a natural physical law. It means that you have a bad law that, that needs to be fixed. So a god, on the other hand, in order to do godlike things, must be able to change natural physical laws. If they can't, then they're no different than humans. They're just able to manipulate nature in remarkable and, and even unbelievable ways if you came from a perspective of humans from 100 years ago. But that doesn't make human gods just because we can make a cell phone. A true god, if there were one, would be able to do much more, would be able to manipulate space and time even, perhaps. But that can happen. Violating natural physical laws requires changing physical constants. Physical constants like the dimensions and time of space or of the quantum field to be more precise. Things like the speed of light, permittivity, permeability, fine structure constant, the electric charge, Planck's constant, mass of the electron, mass of the proton, magnetic field of the proton electron, the gravitational constant, and all the other physical constants. If you can't alter those constants, you can't change the natural physical laws because of the way all the natural forces interact with each other. But the quantum field exists. And the argument hinges on this. On one hand, someone wants to believe in God, and as a quantum field theorist, I say the quantum field exists. Instead, it's the scientific option to a god, as it were. And this goes back to work by 
Planck where he found out that no system has zero energy, that there's always some oscillation. Even so-called empty space isn't empty. It has some oscillations there. Oscillations we call the quantum field that are made of quantum fluctuations. And we know a lot about the quantum field, even though we can't observe individual quantum fluctuations in great detail. We only get little snips here and there of their properties. But the Casimir effect, for example, is an effect that occurs between electric charge cycles, positive and negative charges on, on dipoles. So we know that the quantum field is made of quantum fluctuations that have charge dipoles, like a massless electron-positron pair, as one example. And from there, we can learn a lot about the, what the quantum field does, and particularly that the constants are emergent properties of the quantum field. That because we have these dipole interactions and these quantum fluctuations have wavelengths and frequencies, wavelengths are distance and frequencies are cycles per second, so the quantum field has dimensions and time that emerge from it. The quantum fluctuations can be polarized, which can produce an electric field, which gives us the electric constant, the permittivity. And a rotating dipole becomes a quantum magnet, and this magnet can line up with magnetic fields, producing a magnetic field. So the magnetization of space gives us the magnetic constant. And if you multiply the electric and magnetic constant, you get 1 over the speed of light squared, so the speed of light emerges from the quantum field. And if you have an electric charge polarizer, the quantum field gets polarized around it. And the amount of polarization gives us the magnitude of the charge. And the fine structure constant in natural units is related to the electric charge squared divided by 2. So Planck's constant and the fine structure constant can be derived from the electric charge. And Planck's constant in particular, the energy relationship to a quantum fluctuation and the relationship to frequency. So all these things are interrelated. And I go through this in a little more detail on a video I did on fine-tuning, that the universe is not fine-tunable. And that's where we say that these physical constants form a unique set. And by unique, I mean unique, not just sort of, sort of unique or very unique. The definition of word unique means there's only one. which means it can't be altered. Now there are variations, like the mass of electron and proton can increase if they're moving at a velocity relative to the, the quantum field rest frame. And the permittivity and permeability can increase in the vicinity of, of a body of matter, like a, a star or our sun in particular. So there, there is some variability built into it. But as a set and as a whole, you can't alter any one of the physical constants without making a set that doesn't work. And you can see that if you actually look at a list of the physical constants. Every physical constant is composed of other physical constants. And if you look at all the relationships, you can't change one of these formulas without altering a whole bunch of the formula. So in order to keep the set uniform, it has to stay the way it is. And so that's an important part of physics. And an important part of understanding relativity theory is understanding that some constants are true constants and some constants vary with velocity or matter 
And so those have to work together, which adds additional constraints. And what you end up with is the physical constants we have and we know form a unique set. They can't be altered by anyone. Hypothetical gods cannot change the physical constants. And so hypothetical gods can't violate natural physical laws. So H, there are no gods. So anyone who takes a purely scientific understanding of the universe based on quantum field theory and understands how the physical constants and natural laws emerge from the quantum field as quantum field properties, knows that there's no superior being that can edit the quantum field properties which lead to the physical constants and the natural physical laws. Even if there were such a being, they couldn't edit anything. They couldn't change anything, which would mean they're not gods. You, once again, end up back in the same place. And so this is my ontological proof that there are no gods. And that's what I tell people. And I thought I'd share it in a video in case any of you wanted to share it with others. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little different. If you do, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you're interested in learning more about my research, I have a book on, on the theism question that I call God Hates Science. And I know it's a joke. I'm not saying that there's, there's no God, so God can't hate. But the point is that people who believe in God hate science, or people in, who believe in God fail to follow the scientific method. So the scientific method, or being a scientist, is mutually exclusive from being a religious person. Now certainly people are of two minds of this and <laughs> can violate their science when they think about religion, but I'm not one of those. I prefer to take a scientific view of the religious questions. And so the book God Hates Science steps through 50 or more different proofs for God and, and, and validates them. And then I also have three books for sale on science. I have The Zero Point Universe, The Hundred Greatest Lies in Physics, and my particle theory book, Dubai Quark's The Onion Theory. And the onion theory steps through the, the fine-tuning problem in a little more detail than the other books. But I do go through it in the God Hate Science book. So you can refer to those. I also will link to a couple related videos below and so you can do more research there. And if you buy one of my books, I'm an independent researcher, so that helps support me. And I also have a Patreon account. So, thanks for watching.